When we come to worship God, when we come to worship Him, we are completely exposed. I'll explain the meaning of that coming up in just a moment. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Hembert. I'm Janice. And this is Bible Discovery TV. We are discovering the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and we are in the book of Jude. This is fascinating, right? Well, here's an interesting question for us. Is the devil tied up or is he free to roam? Because certain passages in 2 Peter and Jude seem to say that he's tied up, but other passages in Job and 1 Peter say he roams around. All right, very good. Janice? My segment today is called Glory to God. Very good, and Jim is here. Jim, good to have you here. Hey, good to be here. <laughs> Glory to God, really. Glory to God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm Excellent. looking forward to that. <laughs> Excellent, very good. So open up your Bible and your Bible guide. If you don't have one, stay tuned because we'll show you how you can get one very soon. Uh, and let's open the Word and listen to what God has said to us. Jude 12 through 25. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and in all the harsh things which our ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, Remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Jude, verses 12 through 25. Second John, Third John, and the book of Jude. Now these books are short, but they're very, very good, and I recommend you read them all. Today we're gonna to focus on Jude. The truth of God is often attacked through the subtleties of human pleasure. We learn to serve ourselves rather than to serve the world. The world, we're told, is a buffet of opportunity. Eat what you want, whenever you want, however much you want your will be done. Now this is not God's command, yet that's exactly what we're often told, to serve ourselves. That there is no way to truly learn anything unless we avoid the compromise of truth of what God tells us. But what does the Bible tell us? As Christians, we are to serve God before we serve ourselves. Jude, the half-brother of Jesus, tells his readers that 
He wanted to talk about the wonder of God's provision, but needed to write about the violation of God's truth. False teachers have a way of making things sound good, using a measure of truth, but those things are very bad for us to pursue. And our reading assignment today explores the words of the Apostle Jude as he writes from the inspiration of God's precious Holy Spirit. So what does the Bible say? Now that is interesting as we turn to the short passage of Jude just before Revelation. Take your Bible guide and turn to it. And if you don't have your Bible guide, I'm going to ask you the same thing I've asked you all year. Why not? Call and write and get your Bible guide or go to uh, the, the webpage, Bible Discovery TV, and download it. And I want to say thank you so much for your donations. They mean a lot. They keep us alive. So you've made decisions, and we thank you for making the decisions as we try to go through the Bible the Word of God, it's the oldest book in the world. It's the best-selling book in the world. It's translated into more languages than any other book has been translated. And we focus on the Word of God to know what it means. And so that's really important. And so write for yours or go to the website and get your page. Today, violations in worship. Violations in worship. Jude chapter 1, verses 12 to 25. Father, help us today. Violations in worship, Lord. I mean, I don't know what that means, but help us to understand what it means. Teach us your way and show us your paths. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we ask these things, and we all said together, amen and amen. Now listen carefully. God is going to speak to you, and as God speaks to you, listen to what he says. Don't listen to what I say. Listen to what he says. Very important. Okay. Now let's go on to the passage. This is interesting. Jude 12 says, These are spots in your love feast, these men, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the servant from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. What's Jude saying? When our thinking is not biblical. When our thinking is not biblical. God's true worship is lost. I, I want to read that again. When our thinking is not biblical, God's true worship is lost. We must keep our thinking biblical. Bottom line, we're not talking about style of music. We're, not, we're talking about worship, thinking, how we act, how we praise God. It's got to be biblical. Psalms, there's 150 psalms to teach us how to praise God. The Bible is one-third music. There it is. God has given us everything we need in the Word of God. Very interesting. Jude 16. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. Mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly Lust. These are the sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit, capital S. What does that mean? When we come to the worship of God, we are exposed before Him, capital H. During worship, 
we should keep our minds and our hearts set on Jesus Christ only, only the Lord. When we worship, we are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. We are worshiping God, beloved. That's who we're worshiping. We need to keep that in mind. If we don't, what are we doing? We're worshiping something else. We're worshiping the music. I, I, I've seen concerts where people are singing, obviously not Christian music at all, and not Christ-like music at all. And they're crying, and I'm thinking, what, what's going on here? Or they reach their hands towards a person, and I don't even want to get into that, but what is going on? They're worshiping the person or the music. No, no, no. We have to worship Jesus Christ, beloved. That's what we need to do. Let's go on to 20 and 25. This is important. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. How to him, or now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, be majesty and dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. What's he saying? We must always, always praise God for what he has done for us and given to us. Being grateful is being Christ-like. Praising God is the best thing we can do as a Christian. Praising the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the best way that we can become a follower of God. Lord Jesus, we praise you for coming and living on this earth and dying unjustly. We killed you, but raising again and forgiving us of our sins and giving us a place in heaven. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time now to continue on with our Bible study, and over the last few days, we've been reading through 1st and 2nd Peter and 1st John. And today we finish 2nd and 3rd John and Jude. And something that comes up when reading through some of these passages has to do with the status of Satan. Because passages like Job 1-7, Job 2-2, as well as 1st Peter 5-8, say that Satan is free to roam. But then 2nd Peter 2-4 and Jude verse 6 seem to claim otherwise. So, is Satan tied up or is he free to roam? Well, let's study the relevant passages very carefully. From the very beginning, the father of lies has worked very hard to sow seeds of doubt within the hearts and minds of mankind regarding God's perfect words. As a result, today we live in what is undoubtedly the most skeptical and cynical age of all time. In fact, following in their father's footsteps, skeptics and cynics have even produced a Bible of their own, the Skeptics Annotated Bible. However, just as Satan's words were utterly empty and false in Eden, so they are today as well. As an example, consider just one of the erroneous accusations brought against the perfect word of God. Claim is made that the Bible is in contradiction over Satan's current influence and status. For instance, when God asks Satan in Job 1-7 and 2-2 where he has come from, he responds, from going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Similarly, in 1 Peter 5-8, the Apostle of Christ warns believers to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yet this same Peter in his second epistle, chapter 2 verse 4, as well as Jesus' own brother Jude in Jude verse 6, 
both affirm that God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Based upon these verses, the question arises, is the devil tied up or is he free to roam? Actually, to pit these passages against each other is unwise because it is unclear as to what angels and to which sin 2 Peter 2.4 and Jude 1.6 are referring. Although the skeptic has assumed that these passages are pertaining to the initial rebellion and fall of Satan and his demons, Peter and Jude simply do not say. In fact, many Bible scholars believe that the angels spoken of here are actually the group specifically involved with the Nephilim rebellion of Genesis chapter 6, just prior to the flood. The context of 2 Peter 2 and Jude do seem to place these angels in context with the time of Noah. In any case, whether this is the particular group of angels Peter and Jude are referring to or not, we do know from other Bible passages that not all the demons are bound in this dark abyss awaiting final judgment. Many of them, including Satan, do roam the heavens and earth. In fact, some of the demons who encountered Jesus begged him not to send them there because they feared going to that place. Thus, for the time being, Satan and those demons that have not been banished are free to roam, and no biblical passage denies that fact. Truly, as Proverbs 30 proclaims, every word of God is pure, and anyone who claims otherwise will be, like the devil, found to be a liar. So to pit these sets of passages against each other is really foolish for the reasons that we just discussed. But let me just say that even if these passages in 2 Peter and Jude are referring to Satan and his entire force of fallen angels being in everlasting chains, there is still no issue. As renowned Bible scholar Dr. John Gill explained, everlasting chains could be referring to the power and providence of God over them, meaning that they're in an imprisoned state whereby they are not their own lords and cannot do as they would. They are under restraints and in chains and not to be feared. Now, of course, we know the ultimate outcome of all such dark forces. Jesus Christ will cast Satan and all his demons and followers into the lake of fire. That's in Revelation 20, verse 10. So do yourself a favor and make sure you're on the right side of Christ when that takes place. As one musician put it, I hope you and Jesus have it all worked out. Yeah, th that's really important, Ryan. Uh, people need to understand that that's what we do here. We talk about the word of God, but we also mention Jesus Christ, and that's important. Janice? And that's the key is having Jesus Christ a part of our lives, to be able to follow Him and to recognize as, as well as we can in our human thinking what He did for us, what He has accomplished for us. And my segment today is Glory to God. Jude ends his book with a Glory to God exclamation. Um, and I just wanted to share that before we move on to our great guest that I know I've been enjoying the last few days, and I'm sure you have been as well. You know, we can't do life ourselves. We can't. We certainly can't save, our, save ourselves from sin. Only God can through the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, now to Him, to God, who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Very good. Jim, what we're talking about while wow, working for orphans and widows, and this is important because as we focus on these last two days, we, we're going to come in on this. Uh, show us some more pictures and tell us more about this ministry because this is important. Okay. Um, you know, I've mentioned these dusty roads. Here's a dusty road for you. And it's quite common uh, to see mainly African women, although I've seen African men too, and mainly African women, carrying very heavy loads in their heads. In this case, it doesn't look that heavy, but I've seen them with big pots of water. And I, I don't know how they get them up there. I think others have to help them lift them up there. And then yeah. they've got the best posture in the world because they have to balance those things and they walk for miles, you know, um, th on these dusty roads. And as you might assume from that picture, looking at the dust and the dirt, it's really hot, okay? And we were there just as spring was beginning, and it's gonna get even hotter still. Like right now, it's uh, in Fahrenheit, 105, 110 degrees. Um, it um, is relentless, you know, the, the sun just beats down on you. 
And of course, uh, they don't wear hats. What's that? You know, mm -hmm. I have to wear a hat or I melt. But uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have no protection up there. But uh, that just gives you a little little uh, pick of uh, of what it's like. But then we also walk a lot of trails. Now look at this one. This is a, this is an interesting pick. Look at that. Guess who's that in the front? <laughs> Kathy. That's my wife, Kathy. You know. The kids absolutely love her. She, she's she's like uh, the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah, no, really, when she, when she walks anywhere, yes, that's what happens. That's what happens. See, they all follow. You see, her. see these kids following her, and they, they 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 just can't believe that there's this white woman with blonde hair, <laughs> and and they, they don't know if she's an angel. I could tell so what she sweet. is, but um, they just they just love her. Sometimes they're very frightened when they see her mm -hmm. because they've never seen a woman who looks like this before. And, and some of them, you know, who are four and five years of age have been taught that the white man will come and steal them away. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the boogeyman. But once they get over that, they just fall in love with Kathy. And I often say um, in, in Africa, people, me, they tolerate. Kathy, they love. <laughs> and, and it's really true. And, you know, she, she, does, she does stand out. I mean, you know, hello. Uh, look at that. But he, here we are in a, uh, a very interesting uh, event. Yeah. Um, a village by the name of Kapaluna in uh, uh, Longwe, Malawi, outside of Olongwe, Malawi, uh, held a whole day for us where they wanted to honor us for the work we've been doing for over 20 years. I didn't know this was happening. We arrived, you know, to a bunch of dancing kids and dust everywhere, and they're <laughs> singing. That one group, they do a dance thing where they're going back and forth, dust everywhere, going, fight ya, fight ya, fight ya. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire, fire, fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Boom, 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 boom. The drums are beating and they're dancing and the dust is flying. <laughs> but they, they wanted to honor us. I got to drink your water. Sure. <laughs> All that firing. <laughs> so this is, so a, this is a town, <clears throat> the name of the town? No, it's a village called Ka village? Kapaluna. <laughs> named after the chief. So... <clears throat> I'll show you a pic of the gathering in a minute, but when we arrived, we got out of our vehicles, and there was the chief. That's Chief Capaluna. So the village is named after him. And those are young people. I don't uh, think we've seen the picture yet. Oh, too. okay. There, there, there we go. go. The, the, um, those are young people that were part of the ones who greeted us making the dust cloud. And uh, he, he's greeting me with great joy. He's a very solid believer. He, he not only is the chief of this uh, village, but he also is the chief of the whole region. And uh, I didn't know what he was up to. I really didn't. Because <clears throat> we got into this gathering, and there we're looking from the back of the crowd. There's, that's just part of the crowd. There was over 600 there. Yeah. And under those canopies, we're sitting looking at you, but you can't see us because we're in the shade. And um, standing out in front in that red shirt, is um, uh, he was my interpreter. And beside him, you can see uh, the chief uh, standing. And he's in, uh, so the interpreter is interpreting the chief's words to us. And the chief is, um, I mean, I, I didn't know where to look. I, I, you know, Canadians are not used to being affirmed. <laughs> you know? I mean, in, in Canada, unlike in America, in Canada, we're kind of used to getting put down. Americans know how to honor people. As you know, you're both a Canadian and an American, so you understand this. But they went on and on. In his speech, he waves. He says, you see this crowd? Is there anyone here who is sick? Is there anyone here who is malnourished? Is there anyone here who's not being cared for? Now, anyone, we're talking orphans, widows, young mothers with babies, no, no husbands. We're talking uh, HIV patients who are on antiretrovirals and selenium. But they're all so healthy. Mm. Is there anyone here who's not being cared for? And, of course, I didn't have to answer the question. He said, this is why our Council of Chiefs have decided that you, Pastor Jim and Mama Kati, are no longer Pastor Jim and Mama Kati. You are now Ahasuerus and Esteri, mm -hmm. Ahasuerus and Esther from the Book of Esther. Just like they saved Israel from extinction. Being destroyed. You have saved us from extinction. Wow. Your message of righteousness and justice has spread like wildfire through the villages of Malawi. You have forever changed our nation. And you respond to that. Well, well, there's more. Mm -hmm. And he says, because of this, we've decided to give you co-ownership of this village. You and Kathy now own this village. It is yours. And you must build a house here now. 
<laughs> you got a house there. Well, no, I have to build a house there now. You got to build a so house. So anyway, I got up to speak, and I, I, I'm speechless, okay? And I'm looking around at everybody, and I said, I'm just looking for the place where I'm going to build my house. Yeah. Well, they broke up. They, this was so funny to them. You know, if, if you go to Africa with Canadian humor, they don't laugh. Okay? But their humor is so much different from our humor. They found this hilarious. They laughed. They laughed. The, the chief was nearly off his chair. Anyway, I said, look, I hear what you're saying, but you need to know something. I'm just the grunt guy. I'm just the servant. It is the Most High who has saved you from extinction. Jesus has saved you from extinction. We're merely his dirty hands and feet, covered in dust. You must give all glory to God. Glory to God, Janice. Glory, glory, to, glory God. to God. Kol HaKavod, as we say in Hebrew and Israel, as I lived there for seven years, all the glory, all the glory to God. Mm. WowMission.com, WowMission.com. Go there. It's a great missionary organization. Uh, Jim Cannell on today is the program that uh, essentially speaks for it. And uh, we give to them and, and we encourage you to as well. And uh, consider this around the Christmas season because this is the time and we need to show God who we love. We love him. And uh, that's what we should do. Let's get back to the program. I just want to remind you, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are live in prayer on Facebook, YouTube, and Bible Discovery. I want to encourage you to join us and you can put your prayer request in. That's 3.30 live Eastern time in the United States so that we can pray for you. We have a lot of people there. So join us, won't you? Today, we need to pray. Lord, I want to praise your amazing name for all the good things you have done and helped me with. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. 